Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this epoxy wood fall tray. I'm going to be using some new vinyls from Slide Hustle. I reached out to Susan and asked her if they could do these gorgeous sunflower vinyls. I actually have sunflowers growing here at home and it inspired me to make a fall tray using sunflowers. Of course, Susan does not disappoint. Her and Dan work together to get these beautiful vinyls printed for me. And these will be released today, July 19th at Slide Hustle on Etsy. They will be having a sale the week of the release, but of course I will have a discount code listed below as well whenever that sale ends. So let's get started on this tray. I grabbed this tray last year on clearance from Hobby Lobby. It is 12 and a half inches in the center. So that's perfect for our 11 and a half inch vinyl. The first thing we're going to do is remove those handles since they are removable. If they're not, that's okay. You would just tape them off, of course, before you begin painting and then you can remove the tape and proceed with your design. So I'm going to go ahead and cover those holes up so our epoxy does not go through. I'm just using a couple squares of permanent vinyl. And then we're going to fill in all of those grooves with UV resin from PDB Creative Studio. I absolutely could have used a thin layer of regular epoxy or a fast setting epoxy, but I was working on other projects and just wanted to do this quickly, sit it to the side out of the way. So I added on my UV resin in those grooves, smoothed it out, and then just did a little dollop on top of those vinyl pieces to make sure that they're not going to move once I apply my paint and glitter. But what I like about UV resin is you can actually pop it outside and allow it to cure. So you'll see me add on a UV light just to show that that is an option to cure this UV resin. But I actually just popped it outside in the sun and left it for a few hours so it can be out of the way and I can work on other things. Once that resin was cured, I went over with 80 grit sandpaper just to smooth everything out and make sure that it was level. And then we're going to go in with some Miss Lillian's chalk paint from Cami Page Boutique. I'm going to dry that paint up with my heat gun on low heat setting and then we're going to be ready to add on our glitter and epoxy. I 
I usually don't mix glitters, but I grabbed a color that matched all the colors in our sunflowers. So we're going to use Nightwing, Marigold, and Sassy Lassie. Just do an even amount of all three of these, mix them together, and it pulled all of those beautiful colors from our vinyls into our glitter that we'll be placing around the edges. I've mixed up about 170 milliliters of a little extra incorporated turbo dry epoxy. I poured half of that on the board and left the other half in the cup, dumped my glitter in, gave it a good mix around, and then I'm gonna go around the edges with my glitter simply for the fact that our vinyl is gonna be covering the center. I don't wanna waste glitter. So I mixed it into the epoxy. I'm putting it around the edges where it's going to be visible. And then underneath the vinyl area is just going to be clear epoxy. Anytime I'm placing vinyl on a board, unless it is incredibly smooth, I like to put a layer of epoxy down before I add on my vinyl. For one, that gives it even better adhesion, giving it a silky, or not silky, but smooth <laughs> surface to adhere to. And it also makes it really level and even where wood can sometimes have imperfections, and that's going to show under your vinyl. Once I have smoothed all of my epoxy out, I'm going to go in with my torch and pop all of those micro bubbles and set this to the side for a few hours so it can cure. I chose one of our sunflower vinyls and to make sure that we get it in a perfect circle, I'm going to use design space. So I'm going to create a circle and just resize it to the size that I would like for it to be on my tray. I'm also going to create a few whimsical offsets. So in order to make sure that I get them sized appropriately to go on the tray, I did create a 12 and a half inch circle, which is the size of our tray. Sent that to the back and then I created an additional circle so that can cut our vinyl. I sized that at 11 inches. Once I changed the color so I could see it a little better, I duplicated that moved one over so we can use that of course to cut our vinyl and the other we're going to create our offsets with so to do our offset i resize that circle just a hair smaller than our vinyl is going to be this is going to allow our main circle or our main offset to overlap the edge of our vinyl just enough to cover that edge up i created a 0.035 offset highlighted both the circle and the offset and selected slice this created our original offset then i'm going to duplicate this a couple of times and just move them in areas around that original circle to make this a little whimsical Once I have all of those in place, I'm going to go ahead and select that background, remove it, and also move the circle out of the way for our vinyl. I'm going to highlight all of those offsets and weld them together. I'm using the rose gold textured metallic vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft 
for our offsets. I'm going to weed those out as well as our circle and then we will layer these together before placing them on the board so we can make sure that everything is lined up correctly. To make it easier to transfer those offsets on top of my main vinyl circle, I'm going to go ahead and remove that backing from those offsets by really pressing down the transfer tape on top of my vinyl. I'll flip it over and then use my squeegee tool to press down on that backing as I am pulling it off. And since this is a 12 inch squeegee and our circle is roughly about 11 and a half inches, it really helps put some pressure down on this and keeps everything in place while I'm removing that back. Then I'm gonna take the backing that was on the transfer tape so it doesn't have anything like cut through it, place that back on top very lightly so we don't reattach that vinyl to the backing. Trim off a little bit of that excess. And I did try to line this up on my table, but I definitely needed some light in behind. So I just took this over to my window that's in my craft room, lined that up, and then of course we're back using the hinge method to press the offsets down as we were removing the backing using the extra large squeegee tool. I trimmed up all of that excess vinyl and then I'm going to cut a little piece of that backing off so I can line it up in the center of my board. Press that exposed piece down and then push the vinyl down as we're removing the back. Now my squeegee would not fit and it was really stressing me out because I am 100% dependent on that <laughs> to get my vinyl flat, bubble free and no creases in it, and it would not work until I got about to the center point. I really need to grab the multi-pack of these squeegees off of Amazon. I believe you can get one that's like three inches, six inches, and 12 that all comes in a bundle. Definitely need that so I can get my vinyl down flawlessly like I do on tumblers when I'm working on these boards. So I did, like I said, end up with some bubbles. You can very clearly see those in there. I just took my vinyl weeding tool, which has a needle tip on the end, popped those bubbles and pressed them down really well with my finger. You can even take a heat gun, very, very lightly brush over your vinyl and it will help make those bubbles more visible and allow you to press them down a whole lot better once you have popped them in the center. Now that I have my vinyl in place, I'm going to go ahead and add my handles back on. I could have waited until the very last step for this, but I didn't want to have to worry about drilling through the epoxy. So since we only have a very thin layer of epoxy on here, 
I'm going to take these screws and push them through that first epoxy layer as well as the vinyl. Go ahead and tighten these handles down and then we'll put our final layer of epoxy around the bottom side of the handle and that will help secure them even better. I'm gonna mix about 140 milliliters of a little extra incorporated turbo dry epoxy so that we can add our final layer to this tray. In this final layer, I wanted to add a few little flakes of sparkle so I grabbed Pixie from PDB Creative Studio. As you can see on that black cap, it turns a beautiful gold color. So I mixed a few of those flakes in and then we're just gonna pour this all over the board, being really careful around our handles so we don't overlap them. I just want my epoxy to go around them. Once I have my epoxy on, I'm gonna take my heat gun, heat up that epoxy around those handles, just really slightly and it will help the epoxy level out a little bit quicker than if you were just to allow the board to sit. So you don't have to worry about pushing your hand down into those crevices or using a tool to get in and around the handles. Once I finished spreading the epoxy, I did go back in with my heat gun to help just further level things out. And then I ran over with my torch to pop any of those micro bubbles. I took a box large enough to go over the top of this to cover it up while it cured to avoid any dust particles getting on top of my board. Huge thank you to Susan and Dan at Slide Hustle for trusting my vision <laughs> and getting these vinyls ready for us. It turned out absolutely beautiful, probably even better than I had in my head. And again, these vinyls have been released at Slide Hustle on Etsy. All you have to do is type in Brittany Barnes in the search on the Slide Hustle shop page and all of these sunflower patterns will pop up for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as possible. All materials I have used will be listed in the description with some coupon codes for you. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.